Hello, hey, and welcome to this installment of Rushed Vibes. I am back. <laughs> uh, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing here with Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing. Everybody is almost healthy, um, but we're here for our last episode of mompreneur march but we ain't got no mompreneur here oh it's me i'm low-key a mompreneur i do a lot of freelance hustler stuff so i guess that does make me a mompreneur but we are repping one of our mompreneurs from the month so if you listen to our second episode featuring our mom our mompreneur march mom was missy A.K.A. Melissa. Melissa. I don't know why I say A.K.A. because Melissa is her her government name. But uh, I and David know her as Missy uh, Wilson. I know her as Melissa. Down in the heart of Texas, um, we are repping Humming Bee. So if you need any, any graphic design work, marketing support, Please give her a holler. She's amazing. You'll love her. Um, If you didn't listen to that episode, do yourself a favor. Go listen, learn about her, and realize why she could be an amazing asset to whatever you're trying to create. But we were pleasantly surprised the other day. um, A beautiful pink package showed up, and David brought it, opened it, and we had shirts inside. I wasn't really surprised because I'd been texting Missy. Oh. A couple of days leading up because I told her I was going to leave a complaint because she <laughs> it, she did two day shipping <laughs> and, it and, didn't it, and, it t- and it took three days to get here. So oh. I told her I was going to leave a complaint, but you should have. The shirts are dope. So I'm going to hold off. They are this, super this time. comfy um, and gave me time. something to wear because I was previously in an oversized orange ish hoodie ish type shirt um, that I've had for far too many years. Um, and I was really just going to show up here looking straight tied and david was like you gonna put on your shirt i was like okay i will put on i'll put on my shirt if you'll put on yours got a rep you yeah. see the little did you keep her little envelope so i can send a thank a you little logo here did you keep the little envelope that it came in uh no i threw it away in the trash or in the recycling trash dang i mean you can go digging if you want I'm you, not go dig- di- I'm you can not, go diving i don't dive in trash but dive. yes i do see wrong shoulder i do see the oh it feel like it yeah, it's, it's it's texturized. It's the humming bee. So um, she did an amazing job. I cameraman. love cameraman. Cameraman, can we get a close up? We don't have a. Camera I'm just kidding. There's no cameraman. Just go <laughs> run around real quick. Um, did an amazing job. I love I love when people make merch and it's not cheap. Like it's not the the Walmart t shirts that you're gonna wash. Yeah, the scratchy. Once. The scratchy. Yeah, and it's just like you're gonna t-shirt. wash it once, and then the hems are like. Yeah. They can't fold it evenly, and that's just something that always bothers me. Like I yeah. love a quality. I think because I've worked for so many mark, so many agencies, and so many brands, so I've gotten used to certain types of t-shirts. So when someone gives me a cheap t-shirt, I'm like, oh, "Yeah, you want me to put this on my skin? My skin? The audacity? Yeah, <laughs> your basic cotton, your South Carolina cotton? No, I need that Maryland cotton. I don't know if if there's a better cotton." Uh, also known as Merlin for anyone who, <laughs> who is from that area. I know I know how y'all get down. I know y'all say it. Uh, I just wanted to say, number one, uh, thank you for being well. I'm actually not. And uh, thank you for thank you for being well enough to come back because as our good friend Jarrell said, it just wasn't right without you being it here. Like it was a like it was like intro. It was like Biden with no Harris, peanut butter with no jelly. I like peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah, it was, it was like peanut butter with no jelly. But I, I don't need the jelly. Oh, well, you're weird. Uh, so, yes, thank you. Yeah. We, I, we I, are I, definitely <laughs> a team here at Rush Vibes. No one entity is bigger than the other. So it's absolutely fantastic to have you back. I, I'm glad you're feeling well. I didn't mind holding it down for, can, for the can crew. Can I just say? But... So our bedroom is immediately above our <laughs> recording studio. And I was, I wouldn't say I was on my deathbed, but he said, like, I was laying on the couch as he was setting up. And I was like, I'm going to push through. Like, I just had this weird stomach ache. Like, I couldn't get my stomach to settle. It was probably just indigestion. Um, and so I was going to push through. 
and he was like, "You're dead. Just go, just go to bed." So I could hear, and I haven't gone to watch the episode. I need to go watch and see go how he it. did. Um, but I could hear, like, he probably took like twelve takes. All I could hear, yeah. while I was trying to fall asleep. Down here. And I just heard, "Hi, hello, hey, hi, hello, hey, hi, hello." Hey. <laughs> I would be like, "Hi, hello," hey. and I was like, "Why didn't Damn you it. just just say your just say hey?" No, nah, I had to keep it. I had to keep it going. Consistent. So I had to carry. I had to carry. He the did. I. I'm proud of mantle. him. Mantle. But yeah, I, I was gonna push through, but he. And you know, he insisted I not. And you know, what's crazy is it just threw my whole energy off. So even when I went to edit everything, I just for some reason editing felt different, and it it, it was it was a challenging edit because I, I tried some new like transitions and, and video um, techniques, and then of course we had to 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 weave in the interview that we did with Bethany that we had the day prior or two days prior. So it was, it was a challenge and, and watch. I already cringe when I go to edit our audio and I hear myself speaking, I'm like, Oh, I missed that point. Or man, I'm just, I'm saying, um, or like, or, you know, a lot, but it was, it was that much more cringe worthy this time. So I'm glad you're back. Energy's back. It feels right. All is right with the world. Our children are asleep. Rush Vibes is back for the last episode of March. Um, before we get into what we're going to talk about tonight, just want to say go ahead and the subscribe button. If you haven't, hit the like button as well. Uh, leave a comment if you feel like, if you if you like our, our Humming Bee shirts. Mm-hmm. And if you'd like to see us rep more merch of some of the guests we have on, or maybe just some of the local brands here in Charlotte, because we are all about repping the Queen City. Uh, and if you're listening to us, be it from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Google, whatever, Um, go ahead and make sure you leave us a review and and leave a rating as well because it helps helps us show up when other people are searching for podcasts like ours and connect with us on social media because we're on Facebook and Instagram. I have the little icons popping up uh, doing what they do. And and Jessica mentioned Melissa, who is the owner of of Humming Bee, but definitely go back and listen to Jacynthia Bailey and and Bethany Wilkinson's interviews as well. Um, All... Uh, three different women with obviously three very different stories, but all drop some really, I think, amazing nuggets as it pertains to just, you know, being uh, someone who aspires to be successful in business and parenthood, motherhood, just lifehood, lifehood. I, I was, I was encouraged from, from all three conversations. And I, I think it was a great first month to have, to have guests because we, we highlighted some really awesome people. So if you haven't checked them out, go ahead and check out those previous episodes with uh, Jacynthia Bailey, Melissa Wilson, <laughs> and uh, Bethany Wilkinson. Yes, so yes, yes. tonight we're going to talk about, we're, we're going to do this quickly. I talked to my friend James. I was like, yo, we're going we're gonna to talk about this dude real quick and then we're going to get on to some more important topics. We're going to talk about this whole Derek Jackson fiasco. <laughs> uh, huh. Some news that dropped this week weekend ish uh with Lil Nas X and, and his new song and, and video that came out give us some thoughts on that uh, I'm going to talk about coming to America too uh maybe somewhat of a movie review slash just uh, an opinion uh segment and then if we have time I'd love to talk about an amazing interview I saw on the I am athlete podcast when they interviewed Dwayne Wade um and we can talk about that at the end if if we have time so that's kind of the slate for what we're we're going to be talking about so with no further ado. No further ado. Let us speak. About. Oh, Ms. wait. What are you drinking? Oh, yeah. What are you drinking? The what are we drinking? Thing you're drinking? What are we drinking? Uh, we all had early drinks today. So I think just with everything happening, we just need to get hydrated. Um, so we are drinking pineapple bubbly. Not a channel sponsor, by the way. No, but welcome to be. Matches my shirt. Um just sparkling water i've it's become really mad it's, it's a little off it's, it is it's, it's, a, it's a different hue Co- it coordinates with yeah your, but with it's a different shirt. hue of yellow i do recognize yeah. that um nice try, we've become bi- i got i got into sparkling water and i really got into it so that people in this house would stop drinking my drinks <laughs> and then everyone else in this house started drinking Trend sparkling said, water too. baby so i mean i'm talking about the baby even like if she hears a can crack she's like what waddling over to uh, let me get a sip um there was a can that david had brought over and she kept like insisting that somebody open it because she was ready to drink it solace drinks it now david drinks them now so 
but these uh, just may have been on bubbly. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it mm -hmm. uh, for a minute, but I didn't really jump on board until we were at our friend Deborah's house and she had this exact flavor and I had it and it was like, I heard as soon as I, I took the first sip, it was like, I think I heard angels singing. He did like, not. He's like, so ah. extra. And I it's was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is it. This is, this is the euphoria I've been waiting for my entire Get life. Get your hand out of my shot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, my bad. Um, <laughs> we've got a second camera set up on Jessica, so my hand was it all, all up, up in my space. In but it. yes, the pineapple bubbly is a great flavor, and it seems like it's very hard to come by because I had gone to the store trying to locate it, and it, I mean, they got lemon flavored everything. They just think the world wants lemon flavored everything. Um, but I couldn't find pineapple, and I sent him to get some chicken wings. I don't know what possessed him to look for. Nothing. I just happened to be walking. That was the aisle I took to the oh. to the self checkout, and I walked by, and I, was, I did the you know when you walk by something and then you back yeah. up. What, what, I was like, what? is that? I was like, oh. and, and it was crazy because my rule, especially when shopping at Harris Teeter, is <clears throat> excuse me, if it's not on Vic, and don't get picked. The bubbly happened to be on Vic. It was three three packs. I think it's eight cans in a pack mm -hmm. for nine bucks. How many cans did you buy? How many packs, David? I just bought one. How many boxes or packs of the pineapple flavor did they have? Several. They had a lot. But I was just like... So the flavor that we admit is hard to come by, you came by it and you only bought one. I bought one. Okay. Because it wasn't in the budget for three. It's definitely... It's always... Even if it's... If it was for my mom... Because we my mom was over here and she was like, why didn't you get it? It was only $4. I was like, because the $4 wasn't in the budget. Doris. It's always in the budget. Doris. It's be funny the things <laughs> that are not in the budget for David and the things that are. So this isn't, this isn't, uh, this isn't about You don't me. want to do that because no, you know, you, you know, me. like a new trash can hasn't been in the budget for like a year and a half. Speaking now. of. We've been dealing with a broken trash can that we got for free, might I add, when we moved into works. this house. No, it doesn't work. The trash work. can works. It works. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a video of our trash can and I'm going to put it on Instagram. He's not. After, after this episode He's drops, not I'm going to put it on Instagram. So yes, it's got. You know, it's it's got some it mechanical it's got some mechanical issues. But for a twenty twenty, but it holds it holds trash, and the lid closes. You can lock it if you need to, so it still functions. It still works. You just have to lift it up. You can't use the little footstool. You can, or, but it pops. Oh, heaven, heaven forbid! <laughs> the lid pops off. You kids and your and your your little fancy trash cans. You know, when I was growing up, oh my god, and I would visit my grandmother's house. I used to have to walk to the TV to change one of the three stations that came in. Okay, yo, I had to so do that you, at my parents' house. You, so it's. You just, just calm down. Anyway, man. let's get into this conversation. So speaking, of, speaking of bashing husbands, bashing men, the irony of it all is because we're gonna we're gonna start off with uh, this Derek Jackson nonsense. Miss Jackson, Woo. and he spelled. And I, I'm interested they to know if up. if his last name is really spelled J A X N. No, but um, so Derek Jackson, who I was unaware of before last week, ditto is one of the, I would call, new media stars who is able to gain his following on social media by recording videos in his car, mostly, talking about, you know, hot certain top relationship topics, uh, hot topics, whatever. If you've seen him on Facebook, you'll have, like, the personality on the right side, and then they'll have, like, a video playing on the left side that'll do the split-screen reaction. Uh, apparently, that was, you know, that, that was the bulk of, of his rise to uh, notoriety, and then Obviously came books. I think he wrote a couple of books and he would do speaking tours. <clears throat> Excuse me, speaking events. And a lot of his material was uh, relationship-oriented advice to women um, that, for the most part, came at the expense of bashing men. Mm. Sometimes most predominantly black men. Mm. So uh, most women, I mean, my, I would assume most of his audience was women and, you know, most of his, his haters were, were men. So it turns out that uh, it came out from an old fling or side piece, whatever you want to call it, that Derek Jackson is somewhat somewhat of a serial cheater. <laughs> He's a hoe. We'll just, just, yeah, just a, a male hoe. Um, and a thus, married male hoe. But ultimately just a hypocrite. And, um, you know, people cheat. You know, there's there's a saying, you know, people cheat every day, B. <laughs> so it's not this is not like this is a this is a new phenomenon of people cheating. But, you know, as a black man, you trash fellow black men, and then it turns out 
that you're more trash than the men who you're trashing. You deserve all the flame that you get. And he was getting flamed on Twitter. Uh, But as if that wasn't enough, he forced his wife to sit in on this really awkward video where he uh, confessed to everything and like really went into like really specific details (laughs) and was gripping his wife's hand like so hard. And you could just tell, like, I I felt bad for her because she clearly didn't want to be there. Um, And why would you make your wife sit in on a video where you're admitting to your inability to be, to be faithful after you built a career off of speaking out against the exact behavior that you were, in which you're engaging. And I just, I just don't get it. It was, it was, it it was bad taste. And in my opinion, um, and then he did a reaction video (laughs) where he spoke about himself in the third person. And I, Look, David can't stand when someone speaks look, about this. I, I am <laughs> in the third. I am I am chief indifference, right? There's a very I I have opinions on things mainly because somebody asked me my opinion. If you don't ask me, generally speaking, I can look at something and be like, hmm, you know, it's it's whatever. But anyone who speaks about themselves in the third person, and God forbid, if I've done this in the past, and <laughs> somebody goes and 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 finds it, I'll eat crow. But I cannot stand it when people refer to themselves in the third person like it's just chief like it it just speak it just spews narcissism it's like okay you might as well just have a sign like narcissist so it was just it was horrible like it was just bad and i feel like people are eating it up because he's getting all this press people are attacking his wife making fun of um the head wrap she had on and it's like man this dude is terrible but it's like people are still kind of flocking to him so it's I don't know it was wild it was a wild couple of days on Twitter where I was I was down the rabbit holes what do you think about it I like yourself have no clue who this man is I don't know this man I don't know this man I I'm feel sorry. sorry for this I'm man sorry to this man <laughs> um I never heard his name uh I will probably forget who he is in a matter of months I do sympathize for his wife the real tea is apparently while he was filming a lot of these videos on YouTube, he was parked in front of the houses of these mistresses because it's more than just one. Apparently one interviewed another and like another came forward. Um, so it's, it's, it's getting messy. Like it was. Getting. <laughs> it's, it's, been, get, it's, it's been messy. It's the, the shout out to cousin Mark. Cause it, he's messy. It's getting messy. Inside joke. Um, so that in itself is interesting because the, the women were literally like, that's my house he's parked in front of while he's making these relationship videos. So it's such a it's it's so complex because he's pretty much, you know, do as I say, not as I do. But. I guess you it it makes you wonder because I, I don't know his things to reference, but, you know, I, don't, I assume he was giving good relationship advice to have the following that he's had. Um, I think good is relative. Decent relationship advice um, to have the following that he has and to be getting the attention that he's getting. Because, I mean, if he was giving bad relationship advice, no one would really care. They'd be like, okay, you're giving bad relationship advice and you're not in a good relationship yourself. So, like, we're done. But he must be saying something of substance that had created an audience for him. I I hate the idea that, you know, a husband cheats and the wife has to come and sit or stand at the pulpit or the in front of the press and, you know, silently and embarrassingly be supportive. Like, your whole life is being put in front of the world and you're still processing how you feel emotionally and now you have to, you know, put on the, f- the, the, sh- the face and be the good wife. And it's like, right. Like, why do I have to be a good wife and sit in front of like you, you did this privately. You did this on your own. Why now do you need me to come and help fix your right. image? Like this is something you need to work on. So I personally think it's unnecessary to bring the wife and make it look like, oh, we're strong. Like, no, you're not strong because an, an affair happened. So there's obviously something to 
be said about that. And I don't yeah. like how we instantly jump as a society to victim blaming. So now it's people critiquing the wife from head to toe. She was wearing a bonnet. She wasn't wearing a bra. She was ba- like she looked basic. She blah, had blah, a bra? Blah. I think she didn't have a bra on. I mean, she looked like she's fresh out of bed. Like she looks like yeah. she's barely finished you breakfast. Least, you at least got to put a bra on. You know, um, well, I don't know that she knew what she was getting into. So it's like I'm just saying you need. You need you've to already on. put. You've already. You've made yourself look bad. You've put her in a bad light, and then you didn't go out of your way to ensure that. Maybe that's why she was sitting so still. She didn't even went. <laughs> Stop. But you didn't go. I feel like as a husband, like he already failed a lot of the husband boxes, but it was his responsibility to make sure she was being put out there in the best light because people are always going to troll the wife. It's I I think it it speaks volumes as to how he feels about his wife, because a lot of people didn't even didn't know he was married until the stuff came out. Like apparently she wasn't. You know what else in, is funny? In any of, of his... A lot of people didn't know who he was until... No, but time. I'm saying, I mean, people who knew him... I know. Because, like, even... I and think I guess Char- they I think have he, a kid. Yeah. Yeah, and he, like, I remember watching... Because uh, Charlemagne gave him Donkey of the Day on, the, on Breakfast the Breakfast Club. Club. And he talked about how, I think, Charlemagne went on, on his podcast at one point. So, like, people knew of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, notable people knew of him. But they didn't know that he had a wife. So, it's like, bro, like, you've been hiding your wife? It's like Drake... I think Jake was hiding his kid. Derek Jackson was hiding his wife from the world. Uh, I just, I sympathize for her. Apparently she's, uh, I think she's right now struggling with how she feels. I've heard that she's like posted some videos of her, her own. Like she referred to her bonnet as like. Oh, I heard about that. Was a like something a hel- of salvation or helmet, a hel- helmet, helmet of, of salvation. Of salvation. Yeah. Poor child. Uh, just call it a helmet of humility. Like let, let's, let's make the H's match. Um, Alliteration. Like it's. It's just a, it's a mess and it's becoming a hot mess. And, you know, I think everyone always wants to, to play PR control and I get it, but sometimes let's just like, they should have just released a statement and been like, Hey, not even they, he should have released a statement, referred to himself as himself and been like, this is what I did. I was a hypocrite. I was given all this relationship advice and you know, I was do I was doing everything I told everyone else not to do, and I am working on myself. I am working to improve because uh, I just I don't know. Because if the roles were reversed and say she had an affair, I doubt he would have sat next to her and let her squeeze the circulation out of his hand with his do rag on and his house slippers, talking about. Oh, like, oh listen, let's not come for house slippers, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's let's calm down, all right? Talking about. We don't oh, need wait, look, I, look, look. We don't need to, house slippers to be catching strays here. I haven't okay? listened to the whole thing. David played a little bit of it in bed. I think when like the peak of all of it, and it was right before Solace came in the room, and it was just becoming too much. And yeah, he was I, like, "I, I Derek Jackson, was having an affair, and you know, it wasn't no, just." No, he didn't say I. He said Derek Jackson. Oh, Derek Jackson had an affair. Said, and the third person, I was said not just kicking it. But a full on affair, like, <laughs> like bro, we if know you what said you have an affair. No one thought you were kicking it. Like, like we know what an affair is. No one would care if you were kicking it. Like, <laughs> you'd be a blip. But you, we, we're good. So I'm just, I'm just upset this with the that. Ar- the arrogance, man. This I, is just the- I think you know, and I know he's like, pl- like they, ke- he, from what I hear, they keep releasing videos and they keep put like he and her, like she got her own issues, um, but they keep trying to keep themselves out there. And I think, and I know he keeps plugging his books. So I think this, again, going back to, you know, my Megan and Harry conspiracy, I think there's, this is calculated. I think people are opportunistic and he is taking advantage of a bad situation and trying to continue building his brand. This is going to turn into some well, re- rehabilitation and he's going to come up with a series about, well, you know, rebuilding relationships well, after cheating. I get like I, we already know what's gonna happen. Well, as far as I know, this is his his brand is all he has, right? Like, I mean, if he loses that, then then you know he's I gotta go get like a, a, job. Re- a regular, you know, a regular nine nine to five. So I, why not lean? I mean, I read something that said he got like two hundred thousand followers in a day after all this broke. So which makes me wonder about I mean, you guys just lean. I mean, I, I, some people just lean into it and, and, and try to milk it as, as best I can. People love drama. They mm-hmm. love controversy. I mean, you and I, we watched the bachelor. We watched, uh, Mary at first sight. I mean, it's guilty, guilty pleasures. So I get it. 
Um, I'm not surprised as to him trying to like use this opportunity to push his books or not surprised that 200,000 people decided to, to follow him. It's just, it's where the world, but it's, it's very messy. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad I came out and, and, and he, he was seen because, uh, to, I, I have a problem with men making a living by bashing men. Uh, <clears throat> especially if it's, if you don't, if it's not fair, like Kevin Samuels, a lot of people get upset because he, he speaks very bluntly to Who's women that? It's the dude. Remember the, the, the high, high value guy, the black guy who was, um, talking the, he was talking to a, a woman. It was like, rate yourself and don't use seven. And he basically went off. I played it for you. But anyways, uh, a lot of people say, oh, you know, he shouldn't talk to women like that, but he speaks to men probably just as, as uh, you be fair is they, essentially what I'm saying. Like Kevin Samuels is fair. Uh, but when you just, just bash men, bash men, bash men, you know, it, it's kind of hard to have you know, a lot of respect for, for a dude. And, um, you know, karma is a real thing apparently. So, uh, yeah, that's Derek Jack. And we spent way more time on it than, than I ever really wanted to, but. Oops, our bad. I figured we should at least get into it. So Jessica rushing is sorry about spending so much time. No, 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 discussing. I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, you didn't pick up what I did. Oh, the third. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a good spot to take a break. So we'll do that and then we'll come back. All right, we're back. We're back. I hope you enjoyed that word from our sponsor. Our sponsor, silence. <laughs> take a moment and embrace it. And you know what's crazy is uh, we had to to do a little production stuff. So it took like 10 minutes to get everything done, but you listening, all you hear is the half second that it takes for us to go from segment one to segment two. Even when I listen and you're like, okay, we're going to take a break. So I like anticipate a break and it's like, we're back. It's like, wait. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking I... about putting like some, some elevator music do, or something. Do, 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 maybe play that. I don't want, I don't want people to get sick of the theme song. So I thought put maybe elevator playing... music and then one of us can just record like, we're actually done, but we're, you know, we actually, break. we could maybe just record like just random messages to play in between segments, maybe till a bit. Do the bit. Like, let me do the bit. Anywho, we'll brainstorm off the air, yeah. offline. You see my favorite thing to do in emails. Yeah. It's offline. Oh, I can't stand it. Can we just take this offline? Why'd you bring it on? I, you know, I'm. I, I'm learning as I get older and more um, cranky <laughs> 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 that I, I can't, there's a lot about corporate America that I just can't, I can't stand. So it's like, man, keep playing that, keep playing that Powerball, keep playing that uh, Mega Millions. Maybe one day I'll, I'll hit some. Or that inheritance from somebody, some random yeah, I, I, it's funny. I always tell my dad, like, I always thought that, like, one day when I turned, like, 30 or 40 or had my second or third kid, he'd be like, all right, son, here's this trust that I put away for you. Ain't no trust. No trust. I mean, I, I we have trust <laughs> between us, but I don't have a actual trust. There's no, Ain't no, 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 no inheritance coming from, from the rushings, but that's fine. We inherit love. We got plenty of love. It. Ain't paying no bills. <laughs> Not paying bills, but love uh, will light the way and leads, it leads the way. So, coming to America, sure. Or you, or you, you want to talk about Nas? I'm up for whichever way you want to go. I, 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 I light a little bit on the last one, so let's let's go ahead and talk about coming to America because I'm interested to see what what this is about because I don't I don't know. So. I mean, there's really not. I just kind of wanted to speak my piece on it. And because I have the platform to do so, I will. Um, so we're a few, we're about almost a month since Coming to America 2 was released. Get your hand and out of my. No, you're going to get, get all this. Um, and I, I had a lot of, I went into it with some preconceived notions in terms of how I was going to take the movie. Um, I didn't like, I knew from the jump, I didn't like the storyline when they, you know, they finally released it. Um, I didn't like, I really just didn't, I didn't like the idea that there's an illegitimate kid somewhere because the original movie was written so cleanly. Like there was none of that. Like he came, he found his one love 
and he took her back to Zamunda. Got his royal penis cleaned. Yeah, but he would have done that regardless. Um, so I was so clean, right? Such a I clean was movie. really disappointed when I heard that they were going to have an illegitimate son. So I was curious how they were going to play this, like let this play out, because we all know the first movie. It is a black cult classic. Not even just black, like a lot of people of all races, backgrounds, especially foreigners, appreciate coming to America. So me being African, I appreciate it a lot. Um, I ha- I grew up with Zamunda references. Like people would ask me if my parents were from Zamunda, if I was from Zamunda. And I was like, no, dummy, it's not a real place. Like I've had conversations. Like I one time was getting hit on by a guy and he asked me like where my last name was from. And I said Zamunda. And he was like, oh, that's amazing. I've always wanted to go. And I was like, yeah, you, you know, I've heard flights are cheap this time of year. So, I mean, like there's this weird connection between. That man went to AmericanAirlines.com <laughs> and had his face broken. <laughs> He probably ended up in like Zambia or something uh, or Zaire. This, this, she must have meant this one. Let me go here. Yeah. She said they must like it's silent letters. I'm just using the wrong alphabet. So I I was just disappointed because they had left like it had just at least from what it came out in 89, maybe 91 around my around early 90s. Um, it had just kind of put Africans and black Americans on a beautiful pedestal. We've never had fairy tales. We've never had princes and princesses and, you know, someone coming and sweeping a woman, a black woman off of her feet and then, you know, making her a princess. So it was, it was beautiful. And I really wanted them to continue one. I didn't feel they needed to make a two, um, maybe a spinoff movie but not a two or a series but not i didn't think they needed to make a sequel um and i was just disappointed i felt like there were a lot of missed opportunities because for me certain movies are how a lot of other races interpret black life so i think it's really important for black writers producers directors actors filmmakers in any capacity do their best to not necessarily perpetrate stereotypes that I personally feel are not as overwhelming as society thinks. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm aware that there are a lot of single parent households, um, in the black community. There are a lot of single parent households in the white community. Like every community has single parent households. Um, like every community has illegitimate children, um, or, you know, step, step kids, like mixed families, all of that good stuff. Um, I just felt that they didn't need to mess up the beauty of the storyline. One, by claiming that Leslie Jones raped, um, <laughs> raped him because that's essentially what essentially, happened. Yeah. Um, and they kind of brushed over that. And, you know, in the day of Me Too and all of that, I think it's not too cool that, uh, we were kind of su- like supportive of, uh, rape um but i i felt like they they i i'm so tired of the war-torn africa uh narrative and granted they didn't go to extremes with um wesley snipes character they did bring it they the generals and the guns and the the military and and i just michael (sighs) black yes um who's actually half gunian um which i'm not surprised because he looks it so i was kind of annoyed with that like i would have just preferred if he was from a neighboring kingdom that didn't seem like they were ready to go to war um i really disliked the fact that the only part of zamunda you saw was the castle i felt like it was a great opportunity to give to us what black panther gave to us with Wakanda and I would have loved if they had created an actual countryside city town even if just one where we could see you know the marketplace and the beauty of the citizens but it seemed like everything in Zamunda happened in the in the castle and that was just that just wasn't relevant like it just didn't seem real that's not reality um so i think that was a missed opportunity in terms of the fashion they did an amazing job uh everyone looked pristine i don't uh, there was just they made they brought such beautiful glory to african fashion and making everyone just look beautiful um and i do appreciate the shift in the storyline where you know the daughter uh eventually gets respected and received as 
the next one in line for the throne. But I think it should have just been like that from the jump. Um, the way Lisa was, I feel like if you base it off of Lisa from the original movie, she would have said more up front um, in terms of like, let's let's support this. Let's encourage the, a change in Zamunda. I just didn't like the idea of like backwards Africa because I think they even said, you know, in the movie that women are not allowed to have businesses in Zamunda or something like that. And it's like, that's crazy because African women be running businesses. Like Ghana has the most in the world, I want you to understand, the most businesses run by women in the world. So that idea that... Shout out to Ghana. Shouts. I'm always going to, we're always going to shout out Ghana, especially the Jalof. Um, so the idea that the Jalof be hidden. there's a whole country, Zamunda, that's, that doesn't allow women to have businesses. I was just disappointed. I felt like there was so much opportunity um, and it really just kind of turned into a black family reunion for performers and they do, they're just bringing people out the woodwork. It was like, it's a pandemic and you know, people are just trying to work. So we got the funding. Morgan, what you doing? Come out. Gladys, you where the pips at? Like, just come sing something real quick. So I felt like they did too much, and I felt like they missed a lot of opportunities. And I, I think that there were some people who were just left out. Like, where was Lisa's sister? Where was Soul Glow? Like, there were some key components to the first movie. They should have brought, like, Soul Glow should have, like, turned into the Shea Moisture of today, but in the mo- relevant to the movie. Like, they, they just could have done a lot. And um, I just think they need to start referencing, like, regular black people instead of black people with money. Like me. I, I'd, I'd have written a whole good movie. Like, just what, what I presented. What an amazing, wow. What an amazing plug. Just what I presented was a, whole, was a whole good movie. Oh, so now, now all this, Jessica just taking out her gripes with the movie. To bring it around to say, hey, mm-hmm. Hollywood, holla at your girl. Wow. And I want to emphasize, like, can we stop with the lions? Like, I remember growing up, my, uh, this, the funniest story, my dad was working somewhere and someone was like, oh, like, you guys have lions and alligators and crocodiles in your backyard. And he was like, the first time I saw a lion in my life was in Germany. He went to a zoo in Germany. So, like, we're not pulling whiskers off of off of lions i just really need people to change the the imagery for which they have of africa because it's yes there are there are places that are more remote but it's not this primitive place that is lacking knowledge and intelligence like like africans go so hard you'd be like is this america or is this africa like that i just that was my last thing i just get tired of the whole the war and the animals yeah, so uh, good points. Thank you. Um, I, I obviously can only I, I can't speak from the same perspective because I'm not I'm not African. Um, I'm actually Virginian, <laughs> <laughs> Northern Virginia, not to be confused with you know the, the mother southern, parts. Southern. Yeah, we west, definitely we not west. We don't we don't acknowledge any other people from Northern Virginia. We don't even acknowledge the rest. So, for of the people who are from Western Virginia, but not West Virginia, do they say Western Virginia? I don't know. We don't acknowledge them. Okay, I was, I've just <laughs> never just heard it. I've never I was heard playing for anybody, it. especially Bethany, if she's listening. Cause she's no, from, she was from Southern. I think Wayne's. She's session and door. That's. Oh, is it? It's, it's out there a little bit. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Our bad. Um, All love. So I, I have two thoughts, based on on what you said. One. Uh, I think it's very important to remember that uh, this was a comedy. I laughed. Yes. So, whereas, you know, this wasn't like a documentary or or a movie with a more serious tone, we, we need to, to make sure we look at it in the perspective or in the context of, of what, what the aim was. It was a very silly movie that uh, was made based on nostalgia uh, and... It just wanted to get the majority of the cast back in front of the camera and, you know, run it back, essentially. Um, but another thing I think that's really important is that, you know, a lot of movements in, in Hollywood over these last couple of years have been about diversity. And we want to see more uh, more uh, diverse casts, right? More, more black films. We want to put more black people to work. Uh, you know, we want more uh, black talent to be recognized and given opportunities. This 
was an opportunity where we got to see what was the last time you saw Wesley Snipes in like a really relatively big movie. Right. Before like before he got in trouble. We got, we got, we got Arsenio, <laughs> you know, back in, back in the fall. Trevor Noah was in it. Morgan Freeman, James Earl Jones. Um, Leslie was in there. Right. Like, and then the, the young, the young actress who was on, who was on, uh, the Trevor Noah show. Oh, recently. Uh, what was her name? Yeah. She was, she was able to be put into the, Mbatha? to the, to the spot. Like, so yeah, I, forgive me for, for not knowing her name. I, I apologize. So, you know, we we're kind of getting. And she did an amazing job. No, she did a fantastic she did. job. She was, I, I think, the she the played star, the barber. Yeah, the the star Best of the movie. Was, yeah. To 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 be frank, so just my thoughts on those on those two things. Just keeping it in, in perspective is is a, is a comedy, mm-hmm. um, and it, it was they had funny moments. Some moments where it was like mm, kind of forcing it, flat. kind of forcing it. But I was, I'm never going to, unless it's just straight like trash. Uh, you know, just overwhelmingly horrible stereotypes. Uh, I, I'm I'm not gonna put down, and I'm not saying you were, but I'm not gonna put down a um, um, a project that you know was gave opportunity to mm-hmm. to people who otherwise wouldn't really have wouldn't have had it. So I, I think I just <clears throat> no, but I I get your frustration though because it is it does it does it does serve to a lot of those common. Uh, misconceptions about about Africa that really are unfair. I've never been there, but speaking obviously, my wife is is Ghanaian, um, and building relationships with her cousins um, has kind of allowed me to just to get like little nuggets of of insight into what you know Africa's really like. And obviously, you've been twice, and I've gotten to see it through the lens of you know FaceTime and, and pictures and things like that. And you know, the 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 more I research about about Ghana and Accra and and surrounding areas, it's like yo, it's up and coming and there are neighborhoods where you might think you're in mm-hmm. Baldwin Hills or Beverly Hills. So it's like, you know, I, I can, I can appreciate it from that standpoint, but they'd be living. You know, I, I thought it was never been into Yoda's like they don't go beneath Mercedes <laughs> like BMWs. Like the yeah. So I, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was a decent movie. It, I, it, it entertained I, me. Yeah. It but was, I, I, I think I just wanted I wanted so, and maybe I had my expectations too high for a comedy, but I felt like the first one was a comedy and it, it was true to itself. So I think I wanted the, the, the sequel to do the same, but I did enjoy it. I will probably watch it again. I'm probably more likely to watch the first one more than I will watch the second one. Cause the first sure. one was just so, just so natural and beautifully made. Um, to be loved. Yeah, but I'm sure kids of our loved. generation are going to, you know, appreciate the second one. So, I mean, it's just it just comes with it. I just have high expectations, and I think I'm very guarded for anything that is depicting Africa because I want it to be depicted in the best light ever uh, or the best light it can be so that people don't have the wrong um, concept of what it is to be African, to be from Africa, and what Africa has to offer because when the news shows things that are taking place in africa it's always war fighting um coups and that's not well actually america took over the coups so i mean never mind that was just me throwing shade over here um so i just i just really wanted them to to take advantage of it and just make make africa seem like an amazing glory expressed by jessica do not reflect (laughs) The views of us uh, here at but Park. I'm sure there are more movies in the future to come that will really emphasize the beauty that is blackness in America, blackness ac- around the world. Um, but I think I'm just hypersensitive because with everything that we've had going on, I feel like anything that the media puts out that is focused in totality about being black in any in any form it's so important because people are going to watch it and assume that this is how black if people who have limited access to black people in their personal life are going to assume that this is how black people are like behind closed doors and that's not the case like we're all american we all you know have the house two and a half kids and a fence we don't have a fence um so that that's just my two cents uh but i might be over an- analytical in that that capacity but i will plug Diageo, y'all put in some good dollars to get your brands in there. I saw the Ciroc bottle. I heard the Ciroc plug. 
um, at the bar, the Crown Royal plug. Like y'all really, y'all really did it. So uh, I'm really big about seeing how companies are advertising within movies um, because they're recognizing that commercials are not happening anymore. So they need to get their products into TV shows, into movies. So Diageo does a really good job of making sure like, <laughs> like y'all, especially if it's something black, y'all, y'all gonna know these brands and it's always Crown and Ciroc. So um, shouts to them, former employer, sort of. That's it. I'm done. Uh, so we got about eight minutes left. You want to you wanna touch on this Nas X thing? Sure. All right. Um, what in the bloody hell? <laughs> no, no pun intended. Yeah. So, uh, if 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 you're if it's not your scene, uh, Lil Nas X is obviously a, a, a gay African American male rapper who uh, his most popular hit is probably Old Town Road with uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah, Miley's Miley's pops. Um, so he came out as as gay. I think after. Old Town Road kind of kind of became a hit. Yeah, I think they put it on the country music chart. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, surprise, yeah. bitches!" Yeah. So Black he um gay. he recently released a video. Um, I'd call it more of song, an experience. A song. Call, well, he released a song, a single. Call me by my name. Call me by my name. Mm-hmm. I think. Let me let me look it up. Oh yeah, call me by call me by your name. Your name. Yeah. That's weird. Uh, and okay. it is, it's been doing numbers, especially on, on Spotify. Like I think it's already done like over 8 million streams uh, in the first couple of days it was, it, it dropped. But the video is what all the, the fuss is about. Um, it's gotten governors and pastors and Candace Owens uh, talking about it. So for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's basically, uh, it starts with Nas, I guess, um, being um, basically... He's playing uh, the role of Adam, I guess, in the Garden of Eden. And then the serpent comes down, but the serpent is also Lil Nas X. And then... Um, oh, that was him? Yeah, well, I guess it's supposed to resemble resemble him. And then um, <laughs> uh, I guess he I guess he gets the put on, like, trial or whatever. And then his soul gets, like, I guess he dies or whatever and then it's, he's kind of ascending up to heaven and you see this angel and then there's like this pole that comes up and then he grabs it and he starts sliding down um like this the longest stripper pole ever it was epic <laughs> i was like even i was like okay so we were we were watching it and we were just like laughing because it was like it's just kind of ridiculous it's this like is, that stripper kind, who just, i don't know if you ever saw it but she came on wendy she had gone to the top of the oh pole yeah she fell <laughs> that's not funny it wasn't. She was okay, thankfully. It was, kind of it was funny. I laughed. And then uh, I, I Wendy, found out she Wendy actually laughed. We all laughed. She was okay. And she raised like 50 Gs. Yeah. And then uh, went down to hell and then saw, I guess, Satan and started, uh, gave him a lap dance. Um, and Satan's wearing these shoes that are, I guess, blood shoes, I guess is what they're called. Um, and they're being sold. They're, they're old Nike Air Maxes that have been purchased and then are being re kind of repackaged. So Nike doesn't really have anything to do with it. Although a lot of people who are upset about it seem to, to think they do. And, um, it was just very weird. Uh, I won't say weird. It was very, uh, it was, no, it was weird. <laughs> it was a very weird video to me, but I would imagine that I'm not the target target audience for, for said video. Um, but it was very expressive. And I think one of the, I think Nas put out a tweet saying, you know, there, he basically made a video because people like him, homosexuals were taught for so long that they were going to hell for being, you know, for being gay and blah, blah, blah. And so he said, I hope a lot of people see it and, and are offended by it. Um, I'm paraphrasing the tweet. I think I might put it up on the screen whenever we, um, uh, move this to post-production, but yeah, he was trying to make a statement and he said, he's just. He's just being who he doesn't want to suppress himself anymore. He wants to be him and all of his, all of who he is and, and, and be expressive with his work. And, you know, as, as an artist, he has the, uh, the ability to do that. So a lot of people are up in arms about it. Um, I think Candace Owens put out a video. Like I said, there was, I can't remember the governor had it been South Dakota. Uh, we mentioned it and, uh, there was, <laughs> there was a, there was a pastor whose video went, um, went viral because he was kind of condemning it. So Nas is actually really good on Twitter. He, uh, he trolls very well. So he actually put out a video that said, uh, to apologize. 
So a lot of people in, in today's world, you know, people, they read headlines and then they just retweet without saying so. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm glad this young man, you know, <laughs> and I'm glad he's, he really saw the error in his ways and is apologizing. But really what it was is it was Nas holding the shoe, uh, beginning what, what would be an apology and then actually cut back to the scene of him <laughs> giving Satan a lap dance. Um, oh, he's bad. Yeah, he's, he's his troll game is, is, is A1. Um, but what did you think about how, what were your thoughts as you saw the, the video? Um, I, so to set the scene, I had noticed people were talking about him on social media. Um, I saw it on Facebook, you know, I saw you know, some people post like the, the devil and this is why we have to protect our kids and don't let them on their tablets and supervise. So I was like, what's going on? Like, did we turn left from Old Town Road onto New Town Road? Like, what Like what happened? Because that's the, literally the only song I know from Lil Nas X. And it's probably the only song I'm going to continue to know. Um, and the Kids Bop version is low-key fire. So I probably won't even really listen to his version. No offense. So David watched it, and then he, I was laying on the couch reading, and he was like, you want to watch this? I was like, not really. Like, I don't really care. <laughs> um, but... Everybody's talking about it. Let's see what it's what it's all about. So I was I was silent the whole thing and then at the end I kind of just had this like what did I just watch and why moment. Um it's not for me. I don't need it to be for me. Like don't try to convince me why it should be for me. Um like if that's how he wants to express himself, okay. Um <laughs> the old school Christian in me was like I don't know how I feel about this devil lap dance. It's kind of weird. Then you kill the devil and then put his horns on. Also So weird. he at least defeated Satan. And then became Satan himself. Allegedly. We I don't mean, know. It, they cut the black. But he put the horns on. Um, I mean, Satan's so just a fallen angel. I just thought it was, I thought it was a lot. <laughs> it was uncomfortable for me. Um, and that's something I'm going to let my five-year-old watch. It, it, it's, of course not. It's, it's, it was just weird. Uh, but, you know, if you think of... All the music videos in the history of music videos from time immemorial up until 2021. Like, Marilyn Manson was doing some crazy-ish. Um, like, these rock bands with the, the guy with the, 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 the tongue, the tongue guy. Um, like, they, oh, like Steven Yeah, like, these people, these people are weird. So, it's not like, no, not Steven Tyler. Is it Steven Tyler? He's the tongue guy, yeah. Um, so, it's like music, like, a lot of musicians are are weird, um, but they use their music as a form of self-expression. And I think the one thing that we've talked about on this, this show a lot is everyone has the right to an opinion, but everyone also has the right to shut <laughs> the front door. Like, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Like, you don't have to post it on Facebook. You don't have to come, like, if you're going to come from the Christian perspective and just be like, the salvation, blah, 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 like, live your life the Christian way and be the example as the Bible says. And don't like, like, don't, don't, don't take on that burden. Like, that's not for you. If that's yeah. how he wanted to express himself, like, okay, again, not for me. Like I probably it, for, if it wasn't for analytical reasons, because I knew we would eventually have the conversation, I would not have had reason to watch it. I, like I said, I've seen people post about it. I did not go out of my way to look it up. I saw something about, devil shoes blood shoes whatever again i did not go out of my way to look it up um and i've seen things from both sides i've seen you know you got my gay friends who are like this is hilarious this is comedy and i've seen like straight bible belting christians who are losing their freaking minds like this is the end of times over a music video like all the stuff that's going on and it's this music video that convinces you this is the end of times like we just had a whole pandemic that we are wait for it still in and, and, that, and that boat still stuck in the i know you got a <laughs> whole boat that's cut off a canal like we're about to not have any toilet paper again so like we got bigger damning issues than this little this little boy's music video so like let him do him it like the people who are going to support it will support it the people who are not will not but like there are issues and topics that we actually need to have on the news the news wave and conversations about and problems that we need to fix. Like we need to stop Asian hate black lives matter. We need to work on white supremacy and equality. Like there are things that actually are important that 
this video does nothing. And and I even had David go back because I was like, so what about these devil, these blood shoes? And I didn't really even see them in the video, so I don't know how everyone else noticed them. Like, it, the, the lighting, maybe it's our TV, maybe it's the lighting of the filmography. I don't know, yeah. but I couldn't notice and, them. And now it's actually... Um uh, troll game is amazing. He put up he's, he put up a picture of some like Chick Fil A themed uh, sneakers and was like, "Dang, y'all happy now?" <laughs> and Chick Fil A can't reply because it's Sunday because they're not working. They so they working. I don't know. It was just like it was just it's unnecessary. I think people are just bored and just going out of their way to find issues with things that aren't issues and ignoring the things that are issues. Like we got kids at the border that are sleeping on mats. That's a problem. We got Georgia who's making it difficult for people of color to vote, but saying they're protecting the vote. And that's a problem. Lil Nas X, and if, if, if people are donating their blood for sneakers, like, okay. I mean, it's your blood. It was actually the uh, employees of the company that he partnered with. They all kind of like put a little drop of their own blood. In okay, so now sneaking. they're all blood brothers. Like, yeah. okay, that's cool. Um, weird, that's you. Weird stuff. I'm not going to wear these shoes. I'm not walking around with somebody's blood in my like no that's that's just coronavirus just breeding and rebreeding and rebreeding like who knows what virus is going to be created but yeah i just you know i didn't love the video it was interesting it gave me some hunger games vibes um in the beginning and then it just got really dark and devilish but there are so many other videos that um i think have have crossed the line of discomfort and you either watch them or you don't, but it was like, y'all get over yourselves, like deal with some real problems. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting to me that, um, cancel culture has, has become a very dominant, uh, phrase used in, in headlines. Like even, even liberals like Bill Maher are throwing their, their hands up at this cancel culture thing and how it's going to ruin our society and, you know, I, I think there so there are some arguments that that have some merit there, but you know, people who a lot of the people who I've seen, you know, uh, calling cancel culture toxic or whatever, have been calling for for Nas's video to be shelved or condemning him for it. So it's like, what do you what do you want? Like, do you are you do you want cancel culture to go away, or or do you not, or do you only want it to exist when it when it threatens your what your picture of wholesomeness is and and what um you know what proper content that should be put out is like most people like most of the people i've seen complaining about it they all like oh to hell with hollywood the the hell with all these liberals like we don't need them anyway we're gonna make our own content well then why are you worried about what hollywood's putting out Mm -hmm. so you can't really have it both ways and i've seen um my my, uh, cousin mark put uh we have a group chat uh my cousins mark uh lamont and then my brother Donald and I were all in a group chat. And most of it is just like 90% of it is memes and gifts, which is great because it helps my mental health throughout the day. Uh, but every once in a while, we'll put a, a serious topic in there. So my cousin Mark dropped in the Candace Owen. She she did a video about it. And um, I think she she acted a little quickly because she she said some things that were inaccurate, like Nike pushing it when Nike put a statement out and said, no, we have no relationship whatsoever with Nas or this company that he helped put the shoes out with. Uh, but also she... She basically was saying how black culture is, is I don't know if it's toxic or, or basically said it's not healthy uh, because we're being uh, like Nas and other figures are, are basically being pawns by racist corporations to uh, to put toxicity into the, the culture. Is she a member of like the number one racist corporation down. in the country? But um, one, I want to point out that I think overwhelmingly the, the the one demographic that that is the biggest supporter of rap music is white people <laughs> and white be, kids. Y'all be getting so down. I, y'all I just be wanna, knowing lyrics, and I'm like, what? I just want to call that out. So uh, let's. It's very <laughs> let's, true. This is just, these are just, facts. Yeah, and um, and you, you can't really like if you're gonna hate if you don't want cancel culture to exist, then you can't sit here and try to try to call Nas out. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of. That was kind of my piece on it. I, I think me personally, like I said, like like Jess, it's not really uh, for me. I haven't watched a music video since like WAP. Oh yeah, I didn't watch <laughs> WAP. <laughs> I haven't watched yeah. a video since oh, WAP, but good. before WAP, I haven't watched a music video in like twenty years. 
Um, you know, and a little a little story. You know how I used to um, back when cassette tapes were a thing. You know, I used to get my playlist. I would um, I would radio. take my I would take my cassette player, <laughs> and I would turn on the TV when the music video would come on. I would hit record oh, by, that's clever. <laughs> by, by the TV speaker, but but the quality obviously was trash. Oh, I did uh, it. I would I would listen because it was back when they would tell you what songs they were gonna play. Yeah. So I would just sit by the radio with my blank tape. Well, it, that would have been better. And then you I would got. I would play it, but I had another tape and I would edit it onto the other tape and oh. I would record so that I could cut it seamlessly. Yeah, I would literally just hold my. That's clever though. <laughs> I would just hold it up the radio because you the, get better variety of TV. songs. Yeah, but um, hmm. it's been a while since I've watched the music video, so obviously it's not it's not my my demographic, but uh. Yeah, I mean, I'm, we're not going to let our kids watch it. I mean, we're we're pretty. I mean, we, we can be lax with what we let our girls watch. Like, obviously, our five year old loves Hamilton, and it's the one thing that can keep our our, our one year old's attention for some reason. If we ever need to, like, to like take a breather for a second or, or run and do something. But um, I want to I want to point one thing out that it's not Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion, Lil Nas X's responsibility to raise your kids. Mm-hmm. If that's what you're worried about, like, it's your responsibility. And yeah, it's. It's everywhere, but I know I grew up with parents uh, who, like, they talked to their kids and they said, this is what you're supposed to watch. This is what you're not supposed to watch. Um, and even now, I, I know parents who are, are very strict with their kids and they know what their kids have access to and they know what they don't. So, you know, you can you can condemn stuff and, 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 and whatnot, but ultimately, if you're worried about your kids then that's something you need to worry about. It's not Cardi B's responsibility. It's not Nas's mm-hmm. responsibility. It's not Meg Thee Stallion's responsibility. It's not anybody in Hollywood's responsibility. They make adult entertainment on the For on their adults. on their albums. Like it has a little explicit thing on it. The little explicit uh notification. Movies rated R for a reason. So this is this is it's like, on you. It's on you. So uh just make sure you're doing everything you can to uh Make sure the kind of content you want in front of your kids and you the kind of content you want your kids consuming is the content that they're consuming and nothing else. Um, and let entertainers entertain. And, and if you don't like it, don't watch. Like Yeah, don't watch. It's that it's that easy. You don't like someone's post? Just keep scrolling. Unfollow them. Take a break for thirty days. Like that's refreshing yeah. to do that sometimes. But like you don't always like opinions are so they're necessary, but pe- they're just so overrated. You don't always have to say something. Like what did like all the rules that we were established on as kids? Adults do not follow them. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Like shut shut up. Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah. Sticks and stones, like, like it's just not, it's not worth it, especially when there are actual important issues that are happening in the world that our world needs to like, work on. Like high school bounce basketball announcers saying the N word, <laughs> like having those, having those kind of people teaching our kids and, and walking among our kids. Let's, let's, uh, let's worry about that a little bit more mm-hmm. than, than what kind of music videos are out on Violence YouTube. Violence against women, like there are topics we could go on and yeah. on and on about. Yeah. Education in the inner city. Why do you have to live in a? Ex- why can't we be like Canada and just use the taxes evenly so that all schools are equal? But no, you gotta live in a good neighborhood to have good schools for your kids. Like it's just like there are things that we really need to handle that we're not. So y'all get over yourselves. Like even Cardi B doesn't let her own daughter listen to Cardi B. So that's telling you that she knows what's for kids. And we don't let Solace listen to Rush Vibes because sometimes her mother says bad words. So one time. <laughs> I guess she heard, no, we were playing it because sometimes we'll play it in the car. We used to play it in the car the few times, like the few places we would drive. And I guess the one episode where I said, back that ass up, of all the things I said, Solace retained that. So we were downstairs. She was upstairs. And all I heard was, back that ass up. And I said, what? So, you know, I'm very big on when a kid does something not making them instantly feel in trouble. Like I think for us, you have to do something extreme for you to like actually be in trouble. So it's like, Solace, can you come here? So tried to be low key about it, but she knew what she said. She wasn't supposed to say. So I was like, what did you say? And she was like, Oh, I don't remember. Cause that's just her go-to. I don't remember, but it was like 42 seconds ago. You definitely remember. So after I convinced, I was like, you are not in trouble. I just want to know what you said. So she was like, back that ass up (laughs) so then i had to i completely forgot that i had said i had said it on the podcast and that she had been in the car listening because 
you think they're not listening and they are listening. So, you know, I asked her where she heard it from and she was like, I heard you say it. So then I was like, dang, I'm bad. I'm the bad parent. Like, it's always me because the one time she said she said bitch i was watching the game and she was like mommy what does bitch mean because tasha tasha mac is always yeah 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 so, so we actually we just sat here so we're hypocrites now because we just sat here and uh, talked about well the, game, the kind of content we put the game in front of is our not kids. necessarily a bad show it it, is, it, well honestly it had been so long since we watched it i honest, i forgot yeah, that there we, was profanity in it and it was on it, i think for me it was on the cw so i just assumed like that it, it didn't have. But, we turned and it, I mean, but when it happened, we turned it off and we, we, we don't watch it. In we, front of yeah. Anyone. So now we can't watch anything when the kids are home because we just watch Sophie the giraffe um, over and over again. So, and you know, Hamilton. she came down and, you know, I asked her where she heard it from. She told me and I was like, OK, I, I'm sorry. I said that that's not something that you need to be saying. So let's make sure not to say it again. You're not in trouble. I get it. And she went back and, you know, she hasn't said it since. Only thing like. The only bad word she says on a regular is is bastard, and that's when she's you know singing Hamilton, or you know she almost dropped MFR because of that scene in, in so Hamilton. So again, we're we're hypocrites. We're um, sitting here. But we're like yeah. we're like we're like Derek Derek Jackson. Of we parents. are, but we Derek are Derek Jackson we are, of parents. We are supporter of the fine arts, and sometimes the fine arts, not the game, but the fine arts, being Hamilton, do have an occasional word. But we're really transparent with her, and we're like, that's not something you can you should say. Um, if it is something that like we're singing together, we usually like you know do the kids bop thing and flip the word, put something that rhymes. Um, but she knows what to and to not say. But yeah, uh, it's not. It's not entertainers' jobs to to raise your kids, and people are going off. Like I heard a little bit of something you were playing about Candace from Candace, and people go off like, "Oh my gosh, it's so like we're so profane." Like, okay, rewind to like 1997 and a half. Like people were saying some stuff that we were like, "Who?" Like you didn't realize it, but looking back, Lil Kim, them, like it's this is nothing new. And I know people who grew up on that stuff, and they are lawyers and they are doctors and they are working they are great additions to society they can turn up when it's necessary but it it hasn't hindered who they've become in the future like just everybody just needs to chill that's really how i feel just chill out chillax you're taking it too seriously we got real issues to handle that's it yeah uh real quick you want to touch on the the D-Wade interview we watched? Yeah, you lead that because I didn't know nobody in that room. Yeah, so for anyone who's not familiar, uh, I Am Athlete is a podcast uh, held by former football players. And they go around, they'll interview current athletes and um, and, and, and former former athletes. So uh, recently they, they interviewed Dwayne Wade, um, who I would assume most people know, but just in case you don't, is married to actress Gabrielle Union. Um, together they have... One, Gab and, and yeah, Wade? they have Kavia is their Kavia. They're biological together, um, but as a family, they have four. Yeah, Wade adopted two of his nephews, a niece and nephew, I think. Um, he has Zaire, and then um, Zaya, right? So, uh, part part of the conversation came to uh, Zaya, who is um, their transgender daughter. And Wade just really, he got real vulnerable and, and said that when Kai was, uh, I'm pronouncing the name right? No, Zaya. 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 I don't know why if I said Kai. Initially, oh, yeah, my bad. So Zaya, when she was three, he, was, he said he and Gabby, they like had a conversation like, well, what if, you know, they just, they just have that vibe as, as parents. And then uh, Zaya came home one day, they had a, a school project. She essentially, they were supposed to say, who are you? And she was like, I'm black. Um, and I'm, I'm gay. And so at the time that she came home and said that that she was gay and then ultimately, um, transition, fully transition. I I hope I'm using correct, correct, uh, terminology here, uh, to, uh, to being what? The terminology used by David Rush is not indicative of (laughs) Transition to being uh, a girl. So, and he said, you know, he was, it was, it was, different for him obviously um and not something is it it ran counter um to everything that he had been a part of growing up like you know boys do this boys play sports boys date girls you know boys don't they don't deal with any of that 
uh, you know, is very anti uh, homosexual. So in, in locker rooms and everybody, anybody who's been uh, in, in, in the locker room knows that kind of language is used in there. So he was like, you know, I really had to get to a point where, you know, I, I needed to become aware of this and, and speak out against, you know, ha- hateful rhetoric and hateful language. Um, and I just commend him for just being, um, you know, being a, an, an accepting parent, being an accepting father, because especially in the black community, like a lot of that stuff is, is rejected and kind of like what Lil Nas was talking about, you know, their kids are taught to sort of suppress feelings that they may have or suppress who they feel they, they really are. Um, and they can't even talk, feel comfortable talking to the parents about the feelings that they have. Um, because it's, it, it's not, you know, what they're supposed to be. So I just, I just, I, I, it's so funny when Wade was actually playing, I was, I hated him because he was so good. Uh, and especially when he and LeBron and Chris Bosch teamed up, you know, I rooted against them, but um, just learning a little bit more about, you know, the kind of man he is, the businessman, obviously, and then uh, what kind of father he is. It just, man, it, it really just warmed my heart to see just the love that he has for his, his children and his family. Um, and obviously Zaya, because, you know, he talked about, they would sometimes take pictures because they're very public. They would take pictures on Instagram, um, with the other kids. And then they'd take a picture with Zaya. And he said, you know, I just got tired of hiding, you know, hiding my child. And he said, I, I thought I was protecting her, but he said, I really, I was just, I was pe- protecting myself. Um, and every parent, you know, really needs to look themselves in the mirror and say, are you, you know, do you, are you claiming to be protecting your kid or are you protecting yourself because you don't you don't want to be vulnerable and uncomfortable and have to learn about different things. So, um, and I do remember it. So funny, one of our test episodes we did when we were, you know, learning how to do this podcast that we talked about, uh, I guess the, the moment that they, they came out and announced it, it was for, for a birthday, I think, or 12th birthday. Um, and there was this, this, this photo. Oh yeah. And then there was a lot of, um, a lot of hatred and stuff that came out. Um, so I don't know if, if there was supposed to be a dialogue or not. I just just wanted to to highlight that and and just say that I, I really really commend Dwayne Wade and uh, got a lot of love for him. I just as a fellow father, you know that you know he's admits that he didn't know everything and that he had to learn, but ultimately he had to listen to his child. And not a lot of parents do that. It's you know it's their way or the highway. So um, <clears throat> great interview. I'll link it. You know, if anybody wants to watch, it's like an hour and 40 minutes. But, uh, you know, I'll try to link it where it goes straight to that that portion of the interview if anybody's interested. Yeah. I mean, I, I watched it. I I didn't know anybody else. Um, there yeah. are three other guys. One guy looked familiar. Um, but everybody else, they were just, just some yeah, loud. Jessica doesn't frequent the, the sports world. Just some loud black men um, <laughs> drinking wine, <laughs> which was so funny because they were drinking wine from, like, these epic STEM glasses. Um but well, they I, drinking Dwayne, I know I, I figured they were drinking his wine, but it was just funny seeing because w- wine is not something that is regularly consumed or shown to be consumed by black men, especially like machismo black men. So yeah. I just appreciated that, like these guys are cutting up and laughing and one of them was getting pretty lit. And like, like this is all off of wine. Like there's no Hennessy, there's no Crown, there's no like yeah. Remy. This is just it's wine. They're just one of like rose and not like rose, but like wine. Like they're drinking wine. Um I I appreciate Dwayne Wade cuz just the caliber of his presence in terms of the sports world and being married to Gabrielle and just how social they are. Um, I'm sure it was not easy for him to be the father that he is being to his, all of his children, I assume. So, you know, it's, it's definitely different. I know he got some flack from it. Um, especially being a black man. Uh, I think if he was certain things, it's like, if you're white, you're just, it's fine. Like, okay, cool. But you know, the black community, we we scrutinize ourselves a lot and we scrutinize our, our parenting a lot. Um, so I think it's very, it's it's impressive how, as a family, they've, they've chosen to go about this and handle it. And, you know, at the end of the day, now that I'm a parent, I mean, there, there are so many situations that we are still yet to face. Um, but at the end of the day, it's what's, what's best for your child and for your family and what, you know, 
what's worth having or not having now that could make or break the future. So, you know, I, I, I appreciated how genuine and vulnerable, as you said, he was, um, cause that's just not something we get from athletes a lot. Um, especially black athletes. He was, he really expressed his love for his family, his wife, his children. Um, not to forget that, you know, he did get himself in some scandal before he and Gabrielle got married, but that's another story for another time. Um, cause I just don't like to forget lest, lest we forget. 30 seconds. So, so yeah, I thought it was a great interview. Uh, I'm sure I would enjoy watching others, but I think it's important that more black dads become more black men in general, um, embrace vulnerability. Um, if you need to tear up, tear up. If you need to cry, cry. Like we need to, it's my intention to prepare our daughters for understanding that men are emotional. So, um, like, is men are not these stone? I'm still working All on right, it. That's, um, um, where you don't cut me off. No, no, no we, we got real, real quick. We we'll take a break oh, and then just gonna sorry. finish up. I can't remember what, exactly what I said, but um, I do think it's important that black men with platforms um, express their vulnerability, and I think that it's important that we, as black women, express that it's okay make sure that we understand and respect that it's okay for men to be vulnerable. Um, and that we let our daughters know that it's okay because we are in a time where we are ref like mental health is important, but a big component of mental health is understanding how men, it, 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 a lot of it is enough attention isn't given to men, especially black men. And I remember like, I, I still struggle when David has moments of being emotional, not necessarily crying, but just like being vulnerable. And I'm like, bruh, get your life. Um, but that's because I, you know, it's weird to say I come from a generation where men are supposed to be a certain way. They're supposed to be macho and they're supposed to be, you know, brick walls and they're emotionless. And that's not the case. Like emotions are who we are. So, you know, let's stop trying to force people to not be emotional and let's just embrace it. So I do appreciate that he was like, look, this is how I'm going to be. Like, if you're going to talk about me, you're going to talk about me regardless. So let me just be my true authentic self. Um, even though I think the definition of the word authentic has become so skewed and watered down because everybody's authentic these days. But, yeah, that's all I had. Um, team Black Fatherhood. Amen. All right. Well, that is a wrap for March. Happy. Do you say happy oh, Palm Sunday? Sure. Happy Palm Sunday. And to our Jewish friends, happy Passover. Um, it's been an incredible month. And we, I was just telling Jess before we started recording, I said it, f it feels like forever since we actually just did like a regular episode because we've been doing um, interviews all month, except for the the episode, I guess it would be 16, I believe. With we, Megan we, and Harry. We took a break. Yeah, Who were replaced about. by this Jackson dude. On the, the yeah, annual all, all calendar. Yeah, on the annual meme calendar, yeah. We'll um we'll post that as well in case anybody hasn't uh, hasn't seen it. Gotta keep and you know what, what's crazy is the Capitol uh insurrection was like literally like two months ago, it but was. it feels oh it feels God. like it was a year ago. Like so much so much Yo, has we happened. Are burned out. Um and it was literally in January. It's just it's wild. Wild time. Twenty twenty one is just off to such a interesting start. crazy crazy start so um thanks everybody for watching if you're still here and you haven't done it already go ahead hit the subscribe button hit the like button too because just like on the podcast platforms when you give our channel some love it helps us show up in those searches and the algorithm treats us a little more fairly um, we're on social media go ahead and connect with us there we are also on cash app if you feel led to support the channel uh dollar sign r-u-s-h-d-v-i-b-e S on those podcast platforms, go ahead and leave a review um, and a five star rating so that we can uh, we can show up as well. And thank you to those who have donated. Uh, we do appreciate you. And, you know, your donations do go to a good cause of enhancing your Rush yeah. Vibes experience. So we yeah. do appreciate you. Um, we don't forget you. And if you thought we didn't have donor donors, we do. So oh, yeah. you can become one, too. Absolutely. I'm going to be like um, NPR and just start doing a donation drive. Like <laughs> while David's speaking, I'm just going to interrupt him. And be like, so Ding. now we are, our target goal is, we'll yes, see. Uh, I know I'm all $700 away. And I are, know you the just, weekend. are you one of those people who just listen and wait till the last minute before you donate? Why? I know, I know we can, can really get, get to that goal and maybe even exceed it. So just go ahead and call in. 
I mean, we don't have a, a fifteen thousand dollars Lowe's gift card to raffle off. But, yeah, that's um, what our local NPR. All we was, have, all we raffling. have now is love, love and appreciation. And shout uh, but outs. We'll, I think we'll get to the point where we can do some giveaways. We'll definitely get some <laughs> merch going. Uh, Jessica Come has in. decided to uh, look into that, so keep an eye out for Rushed Vibes merch. Um, once again, special thank you to all the uh, all of our guests from Entrepreneur March. Yes, keep Cynthia momming. Bailey, Missy Wilson, and um, Bethany Wilkinson. Thank you, ladies, very much. I imagine we'll have them back in some capacity down the road. And like I said um, last week, when I was closing up uh, the, when I struggled to close up the episode. <laughs> I said uh, we we have more guests planned, and, and we do. And um, looking forward to uh, to bring some more people on the on the show. So, uh, anything else? I'm Jess. I am David. We are Rush Vibes. We are Rush Vibes. Don't forget to go show Humming Bee some love if you need some branding, consulting, or uh, graphic design work done. Uh, if you haven't gotten a vaccine yet, still be safe, wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands. Just stay home. Stay home. We're almost there, but we're not there yet. Everybody stay safe. Be well. We'll see you guys next week. We out. Stop me now. Yeah, I done can't wait to fucking stop me now.